inside a courtroom. Silence or stand, please. The camera spins through different scenes, the foyer of a busy court, then inside the court. Do you swear by mighty God that the evidence that you shall give will be the truth? Could you tell the court what happened to you? He said something, but I can't remember what he said. Could you tell me what courtroom to go to? Yeah, sure. I'll do most of the talking, but answer the magistrate if she asks you a question. Destroying community facilities is a very serious matter. Words on screen. So you have to go to court. People are in the foyer of the court. We meet two young people. They talk to us. Hi, I'm Sandra, and this is my friend Peter. We're standing in the local court. As you can see, it's very busy. Sandra and me, we've been to court before. I got in trouble with the police, so I had to go to court as a defendant. I had to go to court last month when someone hit me and stole my bag. Going to court can be confusing. That's why we've come here today, just to watch what goes on. Shall we go inside? Peter nods and they walk inside. One of the things you can do to get ready for court is to sit at the back and watch what happens. They sit and talk to us. This video is about going to court, getting ready for the day, what to do when you come here, and what to do when it's over. Silence or stand, please. Everyone stands. The magistrate enters. The magistrate sits. Everyone sits. Wow, so many people, but what do they all do? Well, I know the man up there. He's the magistrate. He's the boss of the court. Yes, I am the boss of the court. My job is to make sure that everyone gets a fair go. Could the defendant please stand? The defendant stands. The person who's been accused of a crime is called the defendant. And the person next to him in the flashy suit is his solicitor. That's another name for lawyer. He's the one that does all the talking. Yes, Your Honour. Solicitor stands. My job is to speak for the defendant. You see, court is complicated, so the defendant needs someone who understands what to say. For example, I ask witnesses difficult questions. I also talk about things yes, like... Yes, well, that's enough talking for now. You may sit. Solicitor sits. After all, there are two sides to every story, as any good prosecutor will tell you. Isn't that right, Miss Mascarpone? Yes, Your Honour. I work for the police side. My job is to prove that the defendant broke the law. To do that, I call witnesses to answer questions about what they saw of the crime. Thank you. The prosecutor sits. Now, the person standing over there is the court officer. Her job is to bring witnesses and defendants into the court and make sure they know where to go. She wears a red badge that says, court officer. Perhaps we should bring our first witness in. Yes, Your Honour. The court officer walks out of the courtroom. Now, when I've listened to all the witnesses, I'll decide whether the defendant is guilty, they did it, or not guilty, they didn't do it. The court officer enters with a witness. Peter and Sandra watch. Sandra speaks to us. The first time I came to court, I was really nervous. But I made sure that I was ready. A bit like if I was going for a job interview. Peter, do you remember how you got ready for going to court? I sure do. But I want to hear about you first. What was it like to be a witness? OK. Well, if I remember... A house. The phone rings. Words on screen. Sandra's story. A witness. Sandra answers the phone. Hello? Hello, Sandra. It's Jen. I was just ringing to remind you that you have to go to court on the 15th. Yes, I know. I have it written on the calendar. She points to the calendar. Maybe we should talk about what you have to do to get ready for the day. Yeah, why don't you come over to my place? You can help me decide what to wear. Sure. Words on screen. Getting ready for court. Sandra is in her bedroom with her friend Jen. She tries on lots of different clothes. Jen shakes her head. Not that one, or that one. <laughs> she puts on some crazy hats. A cowboy hat. Cowboy. The girls are having fun. Sandra poses like a fashion model, but nothing seems right. 
But then Sandra in a smart suit. Jen gives the thumbs up. Excellent. Your best clothes. <laughs> Jen looks surprised at Sandra's feet. Sandra looks. She is still wearing her fluffy slippers. They laugh. Let's put your court papers together in a folder so we know where they are and we remember to take them. Put the bison tablet in there too. I'll make sure they'll get there early. OK. Now, I'll leave the folder next to your bag. There are bananas near the bag. What well, are the bananas for? In case we get hungry. Court can be really slow. There are always delays. You might have to wait there all day. I should take my medication with me. Mmm, good idea. It looks like we're going on a picnic. <laughs> Words on screen. Going to court. The girls walk to the court. Everyone should have someone who can go to court with them and who can help them plan how to get there and how to get home again. They walk inside and put their bags on the security belt. The alarm goes off as Sandra walks through. Many courts have security. This is to protect everyone who goes to courts. A sheriff's officer waves a security wand over Sandra. Thank you, ma'am, you're fine. Thank you. People in the foyer of the court. Local courts are always busy. Everyone is told to come at the same time, and you have to wait your turn. Sandra reads her information sheet. Doesn't say which courtroom I should go to. Maybe you should ask at the desk. OK. They walk to the information desk. Could you tell me which courtroom I should go to? Yes, courtroom number five. Just wait outside until the court officer calls your name. Thank you. They walk to the court. I see you guys. You might see the police officer in charge of your case. He will be a witness too. Hey, Sandra, how are you? You could arrange to meet him here if you feel nervous about nice coming to, to court. Now, Sandra, this is Miss Mascarpone. She's the police prosecutor. Thank you for coming. Hi. Hi. The prosecutor is on the police side. I'm here to help them by telling what happened to me. Now, I'll be calling Constable Taylor first, so you'll just have to wait out here until it's your turn. I hope you brought a good book to read. Oh, even better, good friend is out Great. Do you have any questions? Will I be able to take a back to court? Because I can't concentrate and I get very tired. I'll mention that to the magistrate. Good. Now, just wait out here until the court officer calls your name. If you have to go somewhere, just tell someone where you've gone so that the court officer doesn't come to get you and then thinks that you've gone home. I'll tell her. Sandra points good. to Jen. <laughs> okay. Very good. Thanks. All right, nothing to be scared okay. about, it's really... The defendant will be there too. This is the person who might have hurt you, but you can feel safe in court. The best thing is to try not to look at them. A clock reads 11am, 12.15, 1.45. Bananas are eaten. Sandra and Jen are still waiting. The court officer calls out. Sandra Darth? Yes. Walking into court can be a bit scary. You should bow to the magistrate, but it doesn't matter if you forget. The best thing is to follow the court officer. It's their job to show you where to go. Sandra enters the witness box. Silence. Before you begin, you have to swear an oath. Do you swear by Almighty God that the evidence that you shall give will be the truth? The oath is a promise to tell the truth. The court is a place where everyone must tell the truth. Please respond, I do. I do. Please be seated. Sandra sits. The police prosecutor stands. Your Honour, the witness has told me that she has difficulty concentrating for long periods of time. Very well. Uh, Ms Dart, let me know if you need to have a break. Sandra nods. Miss Dart, could you tell the court your name, address and occupation? Sandra Elizabeth Dart. I live at 61 Rennie Street, Ashfield. And I can't remember the other thing. Where do you work? I work at Russell's Office Network. Good. Now, can you tell the court what happened to you? Yes, I was walking home from the railway station. I heard someone behind me. The prosecutor asked questions to help you explain what happened. And did this person hurt you? when he took your bag? Yes, he hit me on the head. Could you show the court where on your head 
he hit you. She points to the back of her head. Now did he... I could see the defendant watching me and listening to me. I tried not to look at him. I could see Jenny sitting at the back. So I looked at her and I didn't feel so nervous. Did this person say anything to you when he hit you? Yes, he said something, but I can't remember what he said. It's important to only say what you remember. If you don't know, then say, I don't know. Or if you can't remember, say, I can't remember. That's OK. Now, you said that he hit you and then you fell to the ground. What happened after that? He ran away. And did you see the face of the person running away? Yes, I did. And have you seen that face before? Yes, he lives near my home. Thank you, Miss Dart. No further questions, Your Honour. I remember thinking that it was over and I thought that wasn't too bad, but I had forgotten the other side, the defence, has asked me questions too. Lawyer stands. Miss Dart, you said that you fell to the ground after being struck on the head, is that right? Yes, that is right. And then you looked up and allegedly saw my client running away. Yes. Defence solicitors use big words like allegedly and my client. Their questions can be long and sometimes tricky. If you don't understand the question, you just have to say you don't understand. I put it to you that when you fell, you were facing the ground. And with the offender fleeing, it would have been impossible to make a clear identification. Is that not so? I don't understand the question. Let me ask it another way. Mr Petrovic, I think shorter questions would be more helpful. I'm sorry, Your Honour. Miss Dart, how could you get a clear look at his face when he had his back to you? He looked at me. He looked back at you? Yes, he did. At that distance, and with you on the ground, how are you able to get a clear look at his Objection, face? Objection, Your Honour. The witness has clearly identified the defendant as a person who lives near her home. There's no point to this line of questioning. Your Honour, it is the defence position that the witness has mistakenly identified my client. I'll allow the question. Uh, Ms Dart, you may answer the question. You want to go? Please have a break. Very well. Court will resume in 15 minutes. Uh, Ms Dart, I'll remind you not to speak to anyone about the evidence you're giving, you understand? Sandra nods. All stand, please. Everyone stands. The magistrate leaves the room. Sandra and Jen go out to the foyer. I don't think he likes me. No, no, no. He's just doing his job. But remember, we're not allowed to talk about the case. That's what the magistrate said, but why not? Well, it could look like I was telling you what to say, and that might seem unfair to the other side. So let's get some fresh air and talk about something else, like where we're going to have coffee when you're finished. OK. Later in the courtroom. Would you agree? Anyway, I only had to answer a few more questions from the defence solicitor and it was over. It's possible that you saw someone who looked a little like my client but was someone else entirely. I saw his face when he looked at me. Thank you, Miss Dart. No further questions, Your Honour. Miss Dart, you're excused. Excuse means you can go. If there are no other witnesses, the magistrate will decide if the defendant is guilty or not guilty. If you'd like to hear the decision, you can sit at the back if you want to. But don't be surprised if you just feel like going home. I did. Words on screen. After court. The police officer meets Sandra and Jen in the foyer. Thanks for coming in today. You were very helpful. I was very nervous. I go to court a lot and I still get nervous. <laughs> Is there anything Sandra has to do before she leaves the court? No, you did a great job today. You can go home. So, there's only one thing left for us to do then. What was that? Sandra and Jen at a cafe. They pretend to fight over a big slice of cake. <laughs> so if you're going to court, here's what you have to remember. Get to court early. Take a friend and something to eat. Be sure to tell the truth. If you don't understand, say so. 
and tell the prosecutor or court officer if you need anything. Back to Sandra and Peter. Anyway, that's my story. What happened when you went to court? Well, if you think you were nervous, imagine how I felt. I was the defendant. So how'd you get in trouble? Set fire to a phone box. Why? I broke up with my girlfriend, got really mad, so I smashed up this public phone and set it on fire. Words on screen. Peter's story, a defendant. Peter enters his house and walks down the hall. Anyhow, I got arrested by the police and they gave me a can. That's a court attendance notice. He reads it. My first reaction was to file it under bad news. He tosses it. But I remember my cousin telling me that running away from responsibility is like stepping on chewing gum. You end up dragging bits all over the house and making the problem worse. And when it comes to the law, that's the truth. So I called the ABI support group and spoke to a guy called Eric. A quiet brain injury support group, Eric speaking. I told him what happened. The first thing he said was, Get a lawyer. A lawyer? What for? It's not like I robbed the bank. No, Peter, look, there is a lot of complicated legal stuff that you just don't know about. Now, a solicitor is a person who knows how to present the best case for you. How much will it cost me? Well, maybe nothing, if you can get legal aid. Mate, I'll give you the number of the legal aid office nearest you. Give them a call, make an appointment, let me know when, and I'll come in with you. Oh, and Peter, please, bring the court notice with you. Easy for you to say. Peter looks for the court attendance notice in a mess of papers. He finds it. Words on screen. Getting ready for court. Peter and Eric meet a lawyer. The good news is you can get legal aid. But on the basis of what you've told me, maybe you should plead guilty. I'll tell the magistrate you feel sorry for what you did. You'll probably get a fine, but at least you won't go to jail. Should we mention Peter's disability? That's up to Peter. I think it would be good if we could. I don't want to. It had nothing to do with what happened. Peter, I'll have to give the magistrate an idea of your income anyway. If I can say you're on a disability pension, chances are they'll give you a smaller fine. I don't want sympathy. Yeah, you don't want a big fine either. True. Eric helps Peter choose a tie at a clothes shop. You're going to hear it from everyone you talk to. Dress up to go to court. And you think it's so phony. But when the magistrate has maybe five minutes to decide if you deserve a break, putting on a shirt and tie can really make a difference. Words on screen. Going to court. Peter arrives at court. The other thing that goes down well is getting to court on time and on the right day. And don't be surprised if you see a lot of police there. Peter walks inside the court office. Right. Could you tell me what courtroom to go to? Yeah, sure. Peter Harriman. Court number one. Out the door and to the left. Thank you. You're welcome. Peter walks into the busy foyer. Eric arrives. Oh, Peter. How you going, Eric? Yeah, hi. So, do you remember to bring the court notice with you? Yep, I'll put everything here like you told me to. Ah, oh, good man. Now all we've got to do is find Catherine in the legal aid office. Where's that? Mm, see that queue over there? There's a big queue outside the office. Mm. Uh, anyway, what do you got here? I spent most of the morning just waiting my turn. I took some music to listen to, but Eric didn't think this was a good idea. Peter is wearing headphones. Peter, how are you going to hear them call your name? What? Exactly. That's what I mean. What? Peter Harriman? Is there a Peter Harriman? Yeah. Please come with me, please. Peter takes off the headphones. Yeah. He and Eric follow the court officer into the court. They sit with the lawyer. Hi, Peter. The magistrate speaks to the lawyer. Ms Ross. The lawyer stands. How is your client pleading to the charge? Guilty, Your Honour. Sergeant, do you have the facts in this matter? Yes, I do, Your Honour. Peter's lawyer whispers to him. I'll do most of the talking, but answer the magistrate if she asks you a question. 
Peter nods. The prosecutor passes papers to the magistrate. You. You'll see that Mr Harriman has a prior conviction for assaulting a police officer. That wasn't my fault. Peter stands. Ms Ross, can you control your client? Yes, Your Honour. Peter. She gets him to sit. I just pushed him away. It doesn't matter. It's bullshit. If you argue or get angry, it lets the magistrate think you're likely to go out and get angry at other people. Let me do the talking. Oh. Peter nods. So, Miss Ross, what do you have to say for your client? I'm sorry, Your Honour. Uh, this is a difficult matter. My client is a young man who's had to cope with serious health issues in his life. On the day in question... It's easy to get angry at things when you don't have any control. But court isn't the place to get angry. The lawyer sits. The magistrate speaks. Mr Harriman. Peter stands and faces the magistrate. Destroying community facilities is a very serious matter. I understand that you're upset about your girlfriend, but frankly, that's no excuse. I note that this is the second time you've been before a court. I will impose a fine of $500 and require that you enter into a bond to be of good behaviour for 12 months. Peter's lawyer stands. Thank you, Your Honour. The lawyer sits and whispers to Peter and Eric. Words on screen. After court. Peter and Eric leave the courtroom and walk into the foyer. So what happened? Well, you got a fine and a bond. So I've got to pay 500 bucks? Yeah, but Catherine said you can ask for extra time to pay. Now, look, it's important you don't leave until we find out if you have to sign something. Yeah. Now, you can ask at the court office. They walk into the office and speak to a registry officer. Hi, I'm Peter Harriman. I've just been in court. What do I have to do now? OK. The magistrate has placed you on a 12-month good behaviour bond. Can you tell me what it means? Yeah, sure. It means that you agree to be of good behaviour. Just stay out of trouble for a period of 12 months. If you don't, you'll have to come back to court and be sentenced again by the magistrate. Oh, I can do that. It'll be good for a year, I mean. They all smile. OK. If you could sign here and here, this shows that you agree to the conditions of the bond. The officer gives the paperwork to Peter. This is your copy of the bond. You are also fined $500 with 28 days to pay. If you need longer, you can apply for an extension. I might need a bit longer. OK. The officer gets another form. You'll need to fill this out. Don't suppose you're any good with filling in forms? Yeah, I can help. <laughs> Thanks, mate. You're welcome. Cheers. Peter and Eric leave the office. They sit in the foyer. If you pay $20 a week, you can have this fine paid off in six months. How's that sound? OK, if I remember to pay. No worries. I'll call you every pension day and you can pay them $40. Sounds like a bargain. <laughs> Come on and fill that out. We'll be here all day. Come to think of it, we well, have been here all day. Yeah, so yeah, just... So, if you're getting trouble with the law, here's what you have to remember. Keep your court papers together and take them with you. Get a lawyer and a support person to help you. Get to court early. And don't leave court until you've checked with the court office. Back to Peter with Sandra. So, if you have to go to court, take a friend. That's why you won't be alone. Right? Right. They walk to the back of the court, turn and bow to the magistrate. He nods to them, smiles and winks. Words on screen. Cast, Sandra, Ruth Cromer, Peter, Sam Smalley, Jen, Amy Longhurst, Eric, Alan Sinnis, Magistrate 1, Roy Billing, Magistrate 2, Wendy Stralo, Prosecutor 1, Peter Sargent, Solicitor 1, Frank Violi, Legal Aid Solicitor 1, Georgina Naidu, Police Officer Michael Croker, Office Staff Ivan Clark, Defendant 1, Troy Carlson, Defendant 2, Gary Brun, Court Staffers themselves, Barbara Bailey, Adam Baldorf, Laura Dang, Pauline Jones, Joe Safor, Alex Varankovic, Jan Whitby, Jeffrey Woodhouse, Crew, 
Camera, Ian Martin. Sound, Martin Harrington. Camera assistant, Wayne Dring. Production assistants, Troy Carlson and Claire McGean. Makeup, Nikki Ellis. Captions, Australian Caption Centre. Editor, Louise Meek. Sound post-production, Dat Studio and Crow's Nest. Original music, Paul Anthony Smith. Written and directed by Norman Neeson. Producer, Louise Meek. Attorney General's Department of New South Wales would like to extend special thanks to AGD's Flexible Service Delivery and Court Procedures Video Reference Group and Accessible Arts, Chief Magistrate's Office of New South Wales, Headway Illawarra, Intellectual Disability Rights Services, Minefields, New South Wales Deputy State Coroner, Mr Carl Milanovic, New South Wales Legal Aid Commission, New South Wales Local Court and Sheriff's Officers, especially the staff at Parramatta and Balmain Courthouses, New South Wales Police, Salvation Army, Logo, Attorney General's Department of New South Wales, Logo, Egenda, Copyright, Attorney General's Department of New South Wales, 2004.